a video by the architects and today we will be delving into three components of enterprise architecture tools. So what are EA tools? EA tools are softwares to support architecturing for planning, analysis and design, connects different contexts and information across different domains and finally helps to realize business outcomes through storing, structuring, analyzing and presenting EA related data. Gartner has come out with a magic quadrant to rank 9 EA tools according to each tool's ability to execute and copliness of vision. From the 9 EA tools, we have narrowed down our selection to the 3 market leaders, Mega, Beast Design, and Software AG. While all 3 companies cater for visualization, mapping and modeling, and business architecture design in their EA tool, only Software AG and Mega have analysis and design functionalities which Beast Design does not provide. Additionally, Mega's EA2 provides a good platform for innovation, making it the best tool available. Mega's EA2 has four main benefits. Firstly, it caters for digital disruption and continuous improvements. Secondly, it delivers greater business performance and value. Thirdly, it supports the company's transformation. And lastly, it allows for mapping and streamlining. Now we'll talk about the implementation plan for the EA2 that, that was explained by Weilun. So we will involve the EA team as well as the mid to senior level management and the whole implementation plan will take two months to finish. We have three phases, which phase one is the repository structure and governance. Phase two is model and data definition. Phase three will be training and communications. So in phase one, we will identify the governance model. So we will find out how do changes get planned and approved in the organization. Next, we will find out the level of coordination between project teams, EA team, and also the senior, mid to senior level management. Next, we will define repository structure. We will plan the repository structure according to models, uh, the TOGAF model. And we'll also define what, what access roles will exist in this repository, as well as the permissions that these roles have to the different locations in the repository. Next, for phase two, we'll define modeling standards. And in here, we'll decide what modeling standards to be adopted, such as BPMN or UML diagrams, and whether to uh, uh, go together with the TOGAF meta model. So next is the defining of data. We'll define what fields will be recorded against modeling entities and against the models. Lastly, we'll clean up legacy data. So most we believe that most effort will be needed here to map existing objects to the meta model that will be adopted. Next is phase three, which is training and communications. We'll be developing and delivering tailored training to the end users such as architects, process modelers and the like. Next, we will uh, make sure that this training is uh, engaging and very targeted so that the trainees will know exactly what they are doing. Next is the designing and executing of communication plan. So we we'll want to communicate this tool, this EA tool, to those who will not use it but have the need to know, such as executives and senior stakeholders. So throughout, as we have seen, that we have chosen a tool and we have explained the implementation plan, we hope that this EA2 will be implemented successfully and will give the organization effectiveness and efficiency.